Hello beautiful people. I want to make this really quick. Um, so last week I had a lot of visible reactions from people within work, within outside of work, and I was trying to figure out what is causing me to smell. I had to reorganize or re-evaluate the different types of foods I'm eating. Are these foods are actually causing me to smell bad? Um, so I started doing some digging and I recalled making a video some time ago, maybe a year or two ago, about um, the University of College, what's it called? University College London's Hospital uh, T-MAL guidelines on how to treat your odor. I made this video where it's basically a PDF where it has different sorts of information on ways to treat or reduce your odor if you have T-MAL. You know, they have the typical methods like they, ask, they tell you to have choose activated charcoal and take X amount of it, like X amount of milligrams a day or X amount of chlorophyll a day, but let's specifically, I want to, want to specifically talk about the food guidelines, which is broken up into three categories. One is green, meaning you can eat anything that's on that food list. The second one is amber, which is you should eat that in moderation because it does have a good amount of choline in it. And the third one is red, which is the one that you're supposed to rarely eat or just avoid entirely. So I was looking through the guidelines and I'm thinking to myself, maybe I'm eating something. I have something within my food or within my freezer or within my refrigerator that I'm eating that's causing me to smell funkier than ever. You know, typically I already assumed it was going to be beans and broccoli, so I just stopped buying that stuff. But could there be something else? And I did find that there were a couple of things I was eating that actually is on the amber list. Not on the red list, but on the amber list. And those things are uh, spinach. Spinach, kale, and green beans. Not only that, I, I also found out there was like bananas is on the amber list as, as well, I think. And I was curious to figure out what type of food, why would these like food lists be on the amber list? And also another thing to note is that some of these foods are, uh, they have a very descriptive, uh, I don't want to say they have a very descriptive, they're not only do they say this food is, should be eaten in moderation, but also if it's cooked, it should be eaten in moderation. So it made me think to myself, is there a difference? Would there be a higher choline output if one vegetable or something is cooked as, as opposed to it just being raw? So I looked into it a little bit and I actually have a list of different things that I've looked into that I was sort of surprised um, at the choline intake. So I got all this information about the choline intake from I think the website is called nutritionvalue.org and you can go into there and there's also another a website called chronometer that I see a lot of vegan YouTubers use to calculate the amount of uh, nutrition they get from X amount of food. In any case, let's go over the different food I saw. So spinach was actually on the amber list, which I thought was very surprising because from what I remember, I don't think it was high in choline. However, looking at spinach raw for eating 100 milligrams of raw spinach, which I think is like, I think it's like a couple of ounces. Um, it's about 19.3 milligrams. And for a spinach that's cooked, for 100 milligrams, it's 22 milligrams. So there is a small increase in amount of choline if you cook a certain vegetables. Now for kale, I thought was really surprising because I had a feeling kale, I think I recall kale having the lowest amount of choline. But for kale raw, eating raw kale, for 100 milligrams, it's 0 0.5 milligrams, which is really low. And now it makes me question why they said it within the guidelines to avoid it entirely. Maybe it has lecithin or some other type of chemical that might make you smell funky. I don't know. But raw kale is 0 0.5 milligrams and cooked kale is 0 0.8. And I have to tell you, this is the lowest amount of choline with an entire list that I came, came together with. Here's the next food that I actually eat more so, but it's not actually on the list, the t mouth food guidelines, which is surprising. So collard greens. So collard greens cooked for 100 milligrams of cooked collard greens is 24.4 milligrams. And for raw, eating just raw collard greens, it'd be 23.2. So this seems like this should be on a moderation or the, the amber list. 
as opposed to the kale, but okay. Here's another one, green peas. So I have tons of green peas. I have this like vegetable blend, like this frozen vegetable blend that has a mixture of chopped carrots and green peas. And I also had this like plant-based milk called Ripple. And I don't know, I was just taking it some time. I did know that I did, I did get a, some type of reaction um, when I was when I used to actually go into the truck training, I used to do truck training because I was about to become a truck driver. Or at least I, that's what I thought in my head. And there was this one moment I recall that I ate like, like a lot of peas uh, the night before, and I came back and I got more reactions. So I thought like, oh shit, maybe green peas make me smell bad. But for green peas cooked, is for 100 milligrams, it's 26.9 milligrams. Um, and the next one on the list is broccoli cooked, and of course everybody knows about broccoli, and broccoli cooked for 100 milligrams is 19.1, which I find interesting that it's less than collard greens, it is less than green peas. And now let's go to the bananas. So for bananas, 100 milligrams just for a banana is 9.8 milligrams. Now I don't know how much the average banana weighs, um, but it probably is like around you know, I don't think it's, for, for, for it only to be 9.8, I find that interesting that it's on the amber list. But at the same time, I do know that sugary foods, you usually smell worse than sugary foods when you consume sugary foods, whether it is fruit or not, in my opinion, or at least from my experience. So let's keep going down the list. Zucchini. Zucchini was on the amber list. And for raw zucchini, 100 milligrams, it's going to be 9.5 milligrams of choline, which is still, to my, at least for I see, it's fairly low, but maybe there's some other chemical that might contribute to your odor. I don't know. That's why I find it so weird that it was actually on the amber list. I think it was on the amber list. Um, but here's the one that is really surprising. It is yellow corn kernels, such so as not the cold corn cob, but just the kernels in itself. For yellow corn, car ah, yellow corn kernels, 100 milligrams is 30.3 milligrams. This is the highest amount of choline that I have on the food list that I've looked into for yellow corn kernels. And it's funny because in my freezer, I have about two pounds worth of yellow corn kernels, sweet yellow corn kernels. And now I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck? I don't know what to do. I, I just wanted to report that or just talk about these things because I'm thinking to myself, I didn't think these, these, these foods or these vegetables were gonna make me smell bad. I had this entire belief that if I just go vegan and I eat whatever, I can eat whatever I want. But apparently there are some amberless foods and maybe if I avoid these amberless foods and switch out the spinach with like lettuce or something for salads, Maybe I'll reduce the odor, but even then, who knows how much it's going to get reduced, right? I don't want to make it too long. I only want to make it five minutes, but yeah, salute. Everybody else, everybody have a good day. Blah, blah, blah.